Ferdinand Hoenberger's family history. We will show you where Ferdinand and his family lived when they came to Texas, some of the homes they lived in, the Grape Town School, the Grape Town Hall, and the final resting place of Ferdinand, Catherine, and many of their descendants. As many families as were available have been included in this video. They are also included in the Ferdinand Hoenberger History Book. This history of the Hoenberger family was assembled from photos and information provided by Ferdinand and Catherine Hoenberger's great and great great grandchildren. Material that applies to Ferdinand and his children and grandchildren is shown as their descendants best remember it from conversations with and stories told by their family senior members. In some cases, the historical material on older family members is very limited. In others, it is non-existent. This history is intended to better acquaint present and future generations with Hoenberger family members. Photos reflect their likeness and narratives show their interests and activities as well as their relationship in the family. Information contained herein is considered current as of the 1st of March, 1989. In the mid-1800s, a group of German immigrants came to Texas. They landed in the port of Galveston, state of Texas, under the leadership of John O. Moisebach, and migrated to various parts of central Texas. Ferdinand Hornberger and his family were among the ones who settled in the Grape Town community near Fredericksburg. We wonder what these settlers thought as they looked over these hills and valleys that would be their new home. These early settlers endured many hardships, such as food shortages, illness, Indian encounters, and the uncertainties of moving to a strange land. We are told the first winter was especially bad because arrival of expected food supplies were delayed and their shelter offered only limited protection against the harsh, cold weather. Very essential to life, and our man's descendants are buried in this cemetery. Ferdinand and his wife, Henrietta, are buried here, uh, near the original homestead, a short distance from here. Ferdinand was born in 1813 in Berg, B-U-R-G, Germany. There he worked in a factory until he was 42 years old and came to the United States in November 1855. After coming to Grape Town, he worked as a farmer and rancher. He died in 1896 and his wife, Henrietta Schulze, uh, was born in Germany and died in 1880. They had four sons, Carl, William, Robert, and Theodore. Carl died at an early age. These are the stone marking the final resting place of some of Ferdinand's descendants. Theodore Hornberger was born in 1855 in Berg, B-U-R-G, Germany again. He was one year old when his parents brought him to the United States in 1855. He was a farmer and rancher and lived in the Grape Town community. Theodore married Emma Kuhlman in 1875. She was born in Fredericksburg, Texas in 1858. They had eight children, Carl, Edwin, Helmuth, Benno, Alma, Maida, Erna and Selma. Theodore died in 1917 and Emma died in 1924. Both, both are buried in the Grape Town Cemetery as are some of their children. Great grandfather, Ferdinand.
Ferdinand was born in 1813 in Magdeburg, M-A-G-D-E-B-U-R-G, near Berlin, Germany. There he worked in a factory until he was 42 years old and came to the United States in November 1855. After coming to Grape Town, he established a freight business and hauled supplies and trade items between Galveston, Grape Town, and Fredericksburg. He proved to be a successful businessman, and in time the family became owners of some 5,000 acres in the Grape Town and surrounding area. Ferdinand died in 1896. At this point in time, little is known about his wife, Catherine Schulze, other than she was born in Germany and died in 1880. They had four sons, Carl, Wilhelm, Robert, and Theodore. Carl died at an early age, about 21 years. Carl is buried in a field near his parents' first home, a log cabin. Ferdinand and Catherine are buried near their last place of residence, located about two miles south of the Grape Town Cemetery. The residence is now readily identified by a historical marker. of Carl, Carl Hornberger. We're told that he died very young, as you may remember from some earlier statements in this particular film. Carl died of a sunstroke and is buried here in the field on the original Ferdinand Hornberger homestead. Okay, we're ready to roll. That's the corral on the west side. Cut the horses in the night so the Indian wouldn't steal them. And over here they had a little smokehouse. And this old log house. Was that what the they one? stay in. And they, later on they had a kitchen on the east side. And on the west side that was the living room. And this is the first house they this built the when they moved here? They built. And they had the attic. The and how about the attic? Did they live oh, in the attic? Yeah, no, that was it. They had to stay up there at night to, to rest up there. And they only had a log house and that... As a bedroom? Bedroom, yeah, bedroom. Uh -huh. And they, no toilets. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the kitchen they built later on, later on added to the east side. side. The, uh, the west side, you say, was uh, added on later as yeah, a bedroom? Yeah, later on. And took big trees and they always pushed in the big logs there. They didn't cut them up or nothing. Uh huh. Okay, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's walk up to the house there and we'll take some pictures of the inside. Tell us about it. What what did they have in the kitchen? Uh, not too much, man. And over here, that was to your right, they had a shelf in there. A stove on the north side there. Well, this was Ferdinand's kitchen, and the stove was on the north side. And you can see the original structure and the walls where they had the logs, and they were filled in between the logs with mud and with rock. How does this house compare to the one you're living in today? <laughs> About the same. <laughs> this is out of sight, but paid for. <laughs> They had a ladder up here. The outside. Right outside. This is the picture of the inside of Ferdinand's first residence, first log cabin. And hanging in here, you'll see some of the tools and some of the equipment that he had to work with. The beams you see on the ceiling, they support a room that was upstairs. And originally, they would spend the night upstairs for protection against the animals and, and any other intruders they might have. You know, if the highway would run by here, I'd be afraid to start an argument and teach someone. <laughs> This was the bedroom that was added later, and you can see in the, in the back along the rockwork where there, there was a fireplace. 
And I'll show you the reason with it. We don't go in and get a closer look at the fireplace. The uh, rafters in this old building were not made of sawn two by fours as you'd normally think of it today, but they're made of just just poles that are nailed together. And Reuben, do you know what kind of roof they originally had on it? Was it a shingle or a wood roof? I believe that was tin. They put a tin corrugated iron roof on it. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I don't remember it. It's all it's been been corrugated iron as far back as you can remember. Okay, you're on camera. These nails are put older than I am. They're over 100 years old. And they were the nails used to, to, to build. build this cabin, cabin here. And uh, Ruben and I have been told the story that when Grandfather Ferdinand Hohenberger and his wife built this cabin on the original site, that it, he found out he was a little too close to some adjoining property because the surveying during those days might not have been quite as accurate as it is now. So he decided to buy the adjoining property, and we're told that he bought 500 acres thereabouts for 25 cents an acre. And then in a few years later, why well, he sold that half of that 500 acres for 50 cents an acre, which was a very good profit during that time, and consequently he had 250 acres that he didn't have to pay any money for. But that's part of the story of the cabbing and how he developed this land around here. And that land used to be over 25 cents all the around. Yeah, that was a going price for the land at that time. <laughs> Two bits an acre. Yeah. Now you probably couldn't buy it for $2,500. <laughs> That's not around here. That's not water or anything. That's right. This is... What you're looking at here is the last house that grand, great grandfather Ferdinand Hohenberger lived in and his family, his wife. Uh, there's, you might notice the rock fence. Uh, I don't know whether he surely didn't build that, but that was typical of the day. And grandfather Ferdinand Hohenberger had two sister in laws came to live with him their final years. And one little house he built for Mrs. Hagerman, I think, as we told you a little bit ago. And the other little house was built for Mrs. Rehentine. And of course, when they passed away, while well, they were buried here on this property. Uh, the little rock, the little houses here that have been restored were probably their smoke houses. They're kind of small, but uh, it was probably enough for that day and time. The rock fences have been restored quite nicely and are rather beautiful to look at. We're told that people by the name of Whitehurst now own this property. German people seem to have the knack of using every bit of space that they possibly can out of a dwelling. And you'll see in this little rock house, the attic was made useful. And there's still a ladder leading up to the attic. If they had extra company that come over the weekend or during holidays, well, they always had a place for them to stay. And this is something that they brought with them from the old country. Because those of you that have had, that have visited Germany in the last few years or any years in the past you will see the same type of architecture. The attics are never wasted. They're always put to use in some form or manner. And this is one of the little houses that one of the sisters lived in while they were living with grandfather Ferdinand Hohenberg. You're looking at another house that one of the sisters occupied, and you'll also see that the attic was used in this instance.
What you're seeing here is just a rather panoramic view of the old homestead, of all the buildings. As the camera comes around, you can see the buildings that were built, how they were used, the old well site. I don't know whether it was in use at the time, but it's typical of a well that might have been used then. The front porch was quite ordinary in those days because it's set out there in the cool breeze. And of course, the two stories. And if you'll notice the live oak trees, they're huge and they're old. They've been here many, many years. Many eyes have looked upon them. And again, you'll see some of the rock fences that have been restored. Can you read that aloud? Up top? Yeah. Uh, the, the whole no. thing. Ferdinand Hohenberger Farmstead. Uh huh. Ferdinand Hohenberger, CA 1813 1895, with his wife Catherine Schulze and their family left Brem, B R E M E N, Bremen, Germany in 1855, arriving in Galveston on November 20th. After a 73 day ocean voyage, they first settled in Luckenbach approximately 10 miles northeast. The family locate, relocated to the, this area and purchased this property in 1871. Hornberger and his family engaged in farming and he also became a freight driver traveling between San Antonio and Indianola on the Texas coast. In 1882, Ferdinand deeded 160 acres of land to each of his sons, William and Theodore. This property was part of the land deeded to William Hornberger. He and his family lived here until 1914, and William operated a store and post office from one of the buildings on the homestead, as you see in the background. He died in 1832 at the age of 82. The property remained in the Hornberger family until 1950. Four undated gravestones on the farmstead mark the burial of family members. In addition to the graves of Ferdinand and Catherine Schulze Hornberger are the interment of Mrs. Reckentine and Mrs. Hachelmann, believed to be sisters of Catherine Hornberger. Water, so they always found a nice spring, spring or a stream that they could get water easily from. Uh, it not only gave them part of their livelihood, but it kept the livestock going, the gardens going, and none of them probably had running water in those days, so they just dipped it out of the stream and carried it to the house. And uh, we're coming up to the old, one of the Hornberger's home, and Kirby Hornberger might tell you a little bit about the old rock house that we're looking at here. This is the old rock home of Robert Hornberger. It was built in the late 1800s. There is a marker in the uh, the top, I believe it says 1876, I'm not too sure on that, but uh, it was built during that time, and uh, as you can see, it's, it's on the high bluff of, of Great Creek here, and uh, they did this many times in the older days to keep the floodwaters away from their home, but still make it very convenient for them to haul water. And uh, as you can see, it's been here a long, long time. The rock fences tells us quite a story, too. Now, this is, uh, again, the, the home place of Robert Hohenberger. And as you can see, the whole house was made out of rock and uh, had a rock fence around it. And the old tin has been there as long as I can remember. But uh, below that tin, there's a cypress shingle roof. And uh, you can still see it exposed uh, when you go in the upstairs portion. Now, Mom and Dad have lived here nearly all their lives, and uh, the smokehouse that you see here on the uh, on the left is still being in used, still being used today. There are still deer sausage made in there and uh, hung out to smoke just like 
uh, the Opus and the Omas did for, for years and years ago. All that tradition is still alive on, on the old home place here. It's still being done the same way. Uh, behind the smokehouse there, there's that used to be the, the hog pen. And I don't know whether you all can see it or not, but there used to be a uh, holes in the rock fence uh, where the, the grandmothers could pour their, their slop down for the hogs on the other side and it just made it more convenient for them. That was some of the old ingenuity that was used in the old times to make life a little bit easier during the... This is the home of Theodore Hornberger and his family. It is located approximately two miles south of the Grape Town Hall on the old San Antonio Road. Theodore and Emma raised their family here, and later it was the home of Benno and Hertha Hornberger where they raised their family. In the early 1900s, the railroad was built near this residence. As you can see, the house was built of native stone, and the front porch has a unique flagstone floor. The original house was a two-story structure, and over the years several additions have been made. For example, this exterior stairway leads to bedrooms that were added. The current owners have made a great effort to keep the place neat and in good repair. This is the spring that supplied water for the families. Note the cypress trees which are somewhat rare in this part of the country. Next you will see the outbuildings built by Theodore and his family. Many happy hours were spent on this place by Theodore and Emma, their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. It's the next house built by the Ferdinand Hornberger family. As you can see, it's a two-story structure, and it has the large verandas on the front, which was quite common for the houses of that day. Reuben and Ruth Hornberger here live here now. The picture you see is of Theodore and Emma Hornberger. Theodore Hornberger was born in 1855 in Magdeburg, near Berlin, Germany. He was about one year old when his parents brought him to the United States in November 1855. He was a farmer and rancher and lived in the Grape Town community. Theodore married Emma Kuhlman in 1875. She was born in Fredericksburg, Texas in 1858. They had eight children, Carl, Edwin, Helmuth, Benno, Alma, Maida, Erna, and Selma. Theodore died in 1917, and Emma died in 1924. Both are buried in the Grape Town Cemetery, as are some of their children.
This photo of Theodore and Emma Hoinberger's family was taken in about 1894. These are wedding photographs of each of Theodore and Emma Hoinberger's children. Carl Hoinberger and Olga Gellerman. Edwin Hoinberger and Louise Sauer. Alma Hoinberger and Henry Kirchhoff. Maida Hoinberger and Otto Toch. Helmuth Hoinberger and Emma Cowan. Erna Hoinberger and Walter Cott. Selma Hoinberger and Robert Johnson. Benno Hoinberger and Hertha Debler. This is Carl Hoinberger and his wife, Olga. Olga's maiden name was Gellerman. Carl was the o Theodore's oldest son. Carl and Olga's first home was a log cabin. They had two children, Reuben and Gunther. Carl was a farmer and rancher and a member of the singing club and the Grapetown Shooting Club. house built by. I am Reuben Holmberger, son of Carl Holmberger. This is my wife, Ruth. We've been married 42 years. We have two children, David, Carl, and Perry Holmberger. This is a picture of David and his wife, Sonia. They have one daughter, Emma Perry. And this is a picture of Perry and his wife, Elizabeth. They have one child, Gregory. We live on the old homestead. I'm Norma Hohenberger Krenwelke, daughter of Edwin Hohenberger. First, I would like to show you a picture of my father and mother, Edwin and Louise. This was taken in December 1942. This is a picture of their first home and where I was born. I married Ernest Krenmerge in June 1937 in Fredericksburg. This is a picture of our wedding and our attendance. Ernest is standing in the center and I'm to his left, on his left. We 
have two children, Dorman and Jenny Lou. This is a picture taken of them in the late 1940s. Finally, I would like to show you a picture of Edwin's sons. This is the oldest son, Alvin Hornberger, and his wife, Ruby. A wedding picture. And this is Hugo and his wife on their wedding day. Ernest and I made our home in Fredericksburg. I keep busy doing civic projects, church work, and singing in various choirs. I'm Dorman Krenwogi, son of Norma Hohenberger Krenwogi, and this is my wife Rosie. I've been in the insurance business for 18 years and Rosie's been a nurse for 15 years. We do a little farming and ranching on weekends. We live in the Crabapple community north of Fredericksburg. This is my daughter Tina. She's an RN working at Hill Country Memorial Hospital in Fredericksburg and she lives in Fredericksburg. And this is my son Douglas. He works at HEB as a meat processor. And he lives in Fredericksburg. I'm Jenny Watts. My mother is Norma Hohenberger Krenwalke. I grew up in Fredericksburg, Texas and graduated from high school there. This is my husband Byron. He's in the retail business and we now live in San Antonio, Texas. I'm a director and teacher at a preschool and we attend John Calvin Presbyterian Church where I'm active in the music program. Our son Glenn is married to Donna and they have a baby boy Christopher. Glenn works for Braden Wire and Metal in the electronics field, and Donna works at Bear Savings. They live in San Antonio also. This is our daughter, Lori. She is a registered nurse and lives in Anchorage, Alaska. She enjoys needlework and is active in her church, sings in the church choir, and other groups. I am Jerry Hornberger, the oldest son of Alvin, grandson of Edward. This is my wife Ruby. We've been married 25 years. We live in Fredericksburg. I am employed with Sunday House Foods as refrigeration maintenance person. This is our daughter, Corjan, better known as Corky. She is married to Michael Creamwell. They have one daughter, Leah. They live just north of Fredericksburg. This is our daughter, Cheryl. 
She's a student at Triner College in Kerrville. She's also employed part-time at Knopp and Metzger in Fredericksburg. This is our son, Colin. He's a sophomore at Fredericksburg High School. He's also part-time employed with Eckert Trucking. Ruby and I teach dance classes with the community education program here in Fredericksburg. We also enjoy attending the community dances in and around Fredericksburg. Okay. Okay, we're ready to go again. Here we, here we go. From the beginning? Uh-huh. Now, okay. let, just, let, me, let me give you the signal. Okay? Okay, get her ready to go again. This is Edwin and Louise Hornberger. They were married in Doss, Texas in 1902. Edwin and Louise had five children. Alvin, Hugo, Norma, Estella, and Dora. I am Estella. Dora died at age two. Alvin raised his family in the Meisebach community, Hugo in the Shovel Mountain community, Norma in Fredericksburg, and Estella in San Antonio. Edwin and Louise lived on a ranch near Marble Falls. They raised farm products and livestock. They owned and operated a molasses press. Edwin repaired clocks and tuned pianos as a hobby. Louise was a good homemaker, quite creative and talented in many ways. Edwin died in 1963. Louise died in 1943. They are both buried in Fredericksburg. I'm Estella Hornberger Himmel, daughter of Edwin Hornberger. This is my husband, Felix Himmel. We were married in Dallas in 1936. We have three children, Larry Kay, Bonnie Louise, and Karen Marie. This is our first child, Larry Himmel, and his wife, Betty. They live in Bernie, Texas. They have four children. Tricia is the oldest. John. Lorraine. And David. This is our second child. Bonnie Louise Emil. She lives in San Antonio. This is our third child, Karen Marie Emil Foster, and her husband, George Foster. They live in Austin, Texas. This is a picture of Alma Hornberger Kirchhoff, daughter of Theodore Hornberger and her husband, Henry F. Kirchhoff. Alma was raised in the Grapetown community. She was the oldest daughter of Theodore's eight children. She was appointed Gillespie County Tax Assessor Collector upon the death of her husband. Henry Kirchhoff was a school teacher. He taught in the Wolf Creek and Grapetown communities. He also worked in a bank in Fredericksburg. He was elected Gillespie County Tax Assessor Collector and died while still holding this office.
This is Dora Kirchhoff Knocker and her husband, John Knocker. Dora is the daughter of Alma Hohenberger Kirchhoff. At age 89, she is the oldest living descendant, a grandchild, of Theodore Hohenberger. Dora's husband, John, passed away in 1977. Dora is still active in church and choir activities and takes part in walk fest, walking approximately six and a half miles. Dora and John lived in Fredericksburg most of their lives. They had two children, John and Aline, who both live in Fredericksburg. I am John Knocker, grandson of Alma Hohenberger Kirchhoff, and this is my wife, Laureen. We have been married 34 years and have lived in Corpus Christi, Austin, and Waco. We have two sons. Kirby, who lives in San Antonio. And Rory, who lives in Austin. We are both retired and now live in Fredericksburg. This is Aline and her husband, Martin Bakey. Aline is a granddaughter of Alma Hornberger Kirchhoff. She and Martin have been married 23 years and live in Fredericksburg. Aline and family were unable to be present for the taping of this video. These are pictures of Aline's children by a former marriage to Leroy Kirchhoff, who is deceased. This is her daughter Janine and her husband John Peckney and their son Christopher. They live in Bernie. This is her son Stephen Kirchhoff and his wife Sarah. They live in Fredericksburg and have a brand new baby daughter. This is Stephen and Sarah's new baby daughter Selena Marie Kirchhoff, who was born on March the 22nd, 1989, and is the youngest member of the Hornberger family line. This is a picture of Alman Kirchhoff and his wife Violet. Alman is a grandson of Theodore Hornberger. He was an avid sportsman and an accomplished musician. He played numerous instruments and in several dance bands. He also composed and recorded several pieces of music. His wife Violet is deceased and Alman is a resident of Brown's Nursing Home in Fredericksburg. The picture you see is of Helmuth and Emma Cowan Hohenberger. Helmuth Hohenberger was born September 17, 1882 in Grapetown, Texas. He went to school in Grapetown and later attended Drawn's Business College in Dallas, Texas. Helmuth then worked on a farm and ranch in the Grapetown area until 1910. He married Emma Cowan April 16, 1910. Emma Cowan was born April 12, 1892 in Kerr County, Bear Creek Community. She was raised on her parents' ranch and went to school in Bear Creek. She had an unusual hobby for a young girl in that day and time. She enjoyed photography, taking and developing her own pictures. Helmuth and Emma 
moved to Stonewall, Texas and lived in a two-room log cabin, someone like the one used by his grandparents. In 1913, they built a new two-story house on their farm and lived there for nine years. They moved to Fredericksburg in 1918, and in February 1919, they bought an 840-acre ranch in the Blanco, Texas area. On January 20th, 1920, they moved to Blanco, carrying their belongings by wagon and team. Helmut and Emma had five children, Monroe, Anita Martha, Werner, Leona, and Alton. Alton died within his, fir within his first year of pneumonia, and he is buried in Fredericksburg, Texas. Helmut died May 8, 1976, and Emma died July 13, 1975. Both are buried in the Blanco Cemetery. This is Monroe and Zelma Hohenberger. Monroe was the son of Helmuth Hohenberger. Monroe was raised in the Stonewall and Blanco areas. And Monroe was responsible for a number of large civic projects in his community, such as the new 30-bed nursing home that was built under his direction, and the Blanco Livestock Auction Facility, which he was responsible for. Zelma assisted Monroe in their many businesses and was known far and wide for her generous hospitality. She was the chairman of the Blanco County Democratic Party in 1960 for the Lyndon Johnson and Kennedy ticket. Monroe and Zelma had three children who are pictured here with their mother Zelma. The oldest on the left is Arnella Lee, on the right is Randall Monroe, and then the youngest child is Donna Jo. Both Monroe and Zelma were members of the Blanco Church of Christ. Monroe died February 28, 1981, and was preceded in death by Zelma on February 19, 1980. Both Monroe and Zelma are buried in the Blanco Cemetery in Blanco, Texas. Cohenberger Calhoun. I my name is Arnella Hohenberger Calhoun. I'm the oldest daughter of Monroe Hohenberger. This is my husband, James Keeley Calhoun, who I married in October of 1959. This is a picture taken in 1985. We have one daughter, Charlotte Lee Calhoun. James has managed a large ranch in the Blanco area for the past 16 years, raising registered longhorns and wild exotic animals. He loves outdoors activities, fishing and hunting, steer roping. Uh, I was uh, graduated from Blanco High School. I attended Durham's Business College in Austin. I served as owner administrator of a nursing home in the Blanco area from 64 to 68. And I'm currently a financial broker with the A.L. Williams Company. James and I are both members of the First Baptist Church in Blanco, Texas. I have uh, enjoyed leading a ladies Bible study at the church every Thursday for the last nine years. This is Randall Monroe Hohenberger, son of Monroe Hohenberger. Randall was born March 18, 1947, in Pueblo, Colorado. In 1972, he married Sarah Gordon in Stonewall, Texas. They are divorced. Randall now lives in Austin with his wife, Elaine Anderson. Randall has no children. He graduated from Shriner High School in Kerrville, Texas, attended Schreiner Military College and the University of Texas in Austin. He currently operates a clinic of Shotzi Acupuncture Massage in Austin, Texas. 
Randall is an excellent chef and enjoys music and the out of doors. Donna Jo Hohenberger Ars. She is the daughter of Monroe Hohenberger. Donna was born October 13, 1952 in Pueblo, Colorado. Donna married Greg James Ars February of 1984 in Morago, California. Donna and Greg have one child, Matthew James Ars. Her husband Greg graduated from St. Mary's College, Morago, California. He's an avid sportsman, a high school and college swimming champion, and he has been a sales supervisor for Oscar Meyer Company for a number of years. Donna and Greg are both members of the Catholic Church. Donna Jo has a daughter by a former marriage. Carrie Jo Canal, ours, is the daughter of Donna Jo Hohenberger. Carrie Jo was born October 31, 1969, in Austin, Texas. Her daddy is Edward Canal, and her mother is Donna Jo Hohenberger. Carrie Jo attended high school in California, graduating from Placer High School as senior class president, voted best dressed by her senior class. She attended Sierra Community College in Roseville, California, is currently living in Corpus Christi, Texas, and is planning to attend college in Texas. Carrie Jo is a member of a Baptist church. This is Charlotte Lee Calhoun Calloway. She is the daughter of Arnella Hohenberger. She was born June the 7th, 1961, in Blanco County, Texas. Charlotte married Greg Lewis Galloway, June the 9th, 1985, in Blanco County. They do not have any children at this time. Charlotte was raised in Blanco County, and she graduated from Blanco High School. She attended the Southwest Texas Junior College in Uvalde, Texas, and Southwest Texas University in San Marcos, Texas. In 1982, as the member of the Southwest Texas State University Girls Rodeo Team, Charlotte qualified for the National College Rodeo Finals in Bozeman, Montana, in three events, and she ranked in the top ten in the calf roping. Greg Galloway attended Southwest Texas State Junior College in Uvalde. He is currently a part owner and manages his family farm and estate in San Patricio County, Texas. Charlotte is an avid horsewoman engaged in training horses and she's a member of the First Baptist Church. Greg is a member of the Church of Christ. I'm Werner J. Hornberger, the grandson of Theodore Hornberger. And this is my lovely wife, Mary Ellen Summers Hornberger. We were married in Winfield, Kansas on December the 22nd, 1946. And we have five children, and inasmuch as our children are not here at the present for this little taking, we, would th we thought we would show you some pictures of them. Now, our first, first child is Mark Hornberger. And then our second child is Rita Ann Hoenberger Osgard. Like that. Okay. And then our third child is Gary Hoenberger. And our fourth child is Linda Teresa Fanning. 
I guess I should have said Linda Teresa Hohenberger fan. And our last child is Julie Hohenberger Punches. Yes. Her name is really Mary Julie, but since she has my wife's name, we call her Julie rather than Mary Julie Hornberger Punches. We are very proud of all five of them. They've done well and they did us fine. I'm Anita Hornberger Bowen, and uh, I'm the daughter of Helma Hornberger. I went to school in Fredericksburg High School, then I attended the school of nursing in uh, Baylor in uh, Dallas. I graduated from there in 1934, moved to San Antonio and, and nurse, worked as a nurse. <laughs> And uh, until the day I retired, 1978. I'm Judy Lynn Bowen Huey, daughter of Anita Bowen Hoenberger. I graduated from Jefferson High School in San Antonio and then attended the University of Texas in Austin. After obtaining my degree there, I lived and taught school in San Diego, California, in Lawrence, Kansas, and in Kansas City, Kansas. I now live in Little Rock, Arkansas, with my two sons, Nathan Charles Huey and Brian Andrew Huey. Yeah. I am Leona Hornberger Smiley, and this is my husband, T.D. Smiley, Jr. We live in Blanco on part of the ranch purchased by my father, Helmuth Hornberger, when he and his family came here in 1920. T.D. and I have two children, Patricia Ann and David Gordon. You will see them and their families later in this video. My special interests other than my family, of course, are church work, music, social and civic activities. I also like traveling, handwork, and gardening. I would like to mention that Assembly of Historical Information for the Theodore branch of the family has required us to contact many relatives. It was a great pleasure to renew old acquaintances and get to know other family members better. We found, as we think you will, when you review the history book and see this video, that Theodore had a great family. I'm Patricia Ann Smiley Witta, the daughter of Leona Hoinberger Smiley. This is my husband Fred and our son Charles David and our daughter Rebecca Lynn. I attended Trinity University where I studied voice and music. Then uh, in May of 1964, Fred and I got married and after we stayed a few months in uh, Georgia and in New Jersey, we moved to Karlsruhe, Germany where we lived for two and a half years. Then we returned to San Antonio where we've made our home for the past 21 years. Chuck was born in Heidelberg, Germany and Becky was born here in San Antonio. I uh, teach piano, I'm the organist at our church, which is Shara Hills Baptist Church, and I sell health insurance. Hi, I'm Charles David Witta, better known as Chuck. I am the grandson of Leona Weinberger Smiley. Presently, I'm a senior at Texas A&M University, and I am in the Navy. I'm, when I complete my education in a year and a half, I will be a member of the Civil Engineering Corps in the Navy. Hi, I'm Rebecca Lynn.
Lynn Witte, better known as Becky, and I'm the granddaughter of Leona Hoinberger Smiley. I'm currently attending Texas A&M University, Giga Mags, where I'm a sophomore, and I'm majoring in secondary education with an emphasis in math and history. I am David Smiley, and I am the son of Leona Hoinberger Smiley, and this is my wife Donna. She and I both went to Thomas Jefferson High School in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, she went to University of Texas at San Antonio, and I graduated from Texas Tech in 1979. Went to work for Conoco, and uh, we lived in Hobbs, New Mexico for eight and a half years. And about a year ago, we got transferred to Casper, Wyoming. We've lived up there now for a little over a year, and we both really enjoy it up there. We enjoy the mountains. And believe it or not, we enjoy shoveling snow. Erna Hoinberger Cott was Theodore's sixth child. She married Walter Cott in 1905. They had one daughter, Gertrude. Erna enjoyed singing in the Herman Sons Choir and working in her flower garden. Erna and Walter had the pleasure of celebrating their golden wedding anniversary. Gertrude Land. I am Gertrude Land, daughter of Erna Hohenberger. I live in Fredericksburg, Texas. I have one daughter, I'm Jean Watts, and three granddaughters. Their names are Terry Beth, Pamela Kay, and Stacy Lee. I also have two great-grandchildren, Tara McDaniels and Jordan Wayne Touch. This is a wedding photograph of Selma Hoinberger and Robert Johnson. They were married in Fredericksburg, Texas. She was raised in the Grape Town community and after marriage, they moved to Floresville, Texas. Selma and Robert had one child, Gladys. Selma, here. Yeah. This is Hertha Hornberger, wife of Benno Hornberger. Benno and Hertha were married the 10th of October, 1914, in Grapetown at her parents' place. They lived on Benno's father's farm and ranch until they retired in Fredericksburg in 1969. They had three children. Vera, the oldest, now lives near the Benner Hornberger home place. I'm Palmer, the second child. We live northeast of Fredericksburg. I am retired from the real estate business. Theo, the third child, lives on part of the old original Theodore Hornberger home place. He is also retired. Hertha is the sole survivor of the second generation of the Hornberger family. She is now 92 years old and she lives alone. Greeting. All right. It was my mother, Hera Hornberger. Uh, Benno is a Frau. Benno and Hera were married on the 10th of October, 1914, in Grape Town, out on Platz. Miguel. Das war auf Deblers Platz, wo ihr euch verheiratet habt. Ja, auf unser Platz, ja. Ja. Zu Hause. Ja, richtig. Ja. And they, they lived on Benno's father's farm, old Theodore Holmberger Place, until they retired in Fredericksburg in 1969. They had three children. Vera, the oldest, now lives near the Benno Holmberger home place, about a mile and a half, part of the Convert place. When when that's not correct, he must have saw. Yeah. I'm Palmer, the second child. We live northeast of Fredericksburg. I'm retired from the real estate business. And Theo, or Teddy, the third child, lives on part of the old home place, the Theodore or Benno Holmberger place. He is also retired. Now, Mama here is the sole survivor of the second generation of the Hornberger family. 
She's 92 years old, and she still lives alone. That's good. Ja, ja müssen wir uns mal dumm halten machen. Ja. 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 Jetzt müssen wir bloß noch ein Butchermesser haben, wie du um den Helm gehabt hast. Ja. Das, das besser kommt nicht da rein. Oder? Ha? Sure. Warum denn nicht? Ja. Hertha Hornberger. They were both raised in the Grape Town community, and they attended grammar school where the greater part of the time they were taught by their brother-in-law, Heinrich Kehoff. After marriage, Benno and Hertha resided with his parents and a brother, Carl, on the Theodor farm. Although it was during the Depression, Benno and Hertha worked to assure their children received a high school education. Declining health prompted Benno to sell his home and move to Fredericksburg. This is my husband, Kurt. Kurt's parents were from the Robert Hornberger family. We have one child, Carly. This is Carly and her husband, Daniel Sagerville. They live in Fredericksburg. They have two daughters. The oldest daughter is Sherry, and this is her husband, Timmy Franzen. They reside in San Antonio. The youngest daughter is Lisa. She's in the sixth grade and goes to Fredericksburg Middle School. This is a picture of the Grapetown School. It was built in 1882. And most of Roberts, Williams, and Theodore's children went to school here, as did Weir and I. Weir and I were married 55 years ago in Fredericksburg, and I have made our home on my parents' homestead, a rock house built some 91 years ago. Our occupation is farming and ranching. Okay. I'm Palmer Hornberger. I'm the second child of Benno Hornberger. And this is my wife, Florence. We live northeast of Fredericksburg on a, we had a farm and ranch there. We have a little trailer park now. We still have a real estate business, but we're halfway retired from it. So in essence, we're retired. I've got a few sheep, and Florence still dabbles in real estate a little bit. Now, children, we have three children. Cindy is our oldest. She's married. This is Cindy. She's married to Armin Engel, Jr. And their children, uh, six grandchildren. The oldest is Julie. She is married now. And then the next one is John. He's a mechanic in Dallas or in Richardson. And then comes Margaret. And she's going to school in... Dallas, and then comes Diane, uh, no, who's Diane? Okay, then comes Diane, she's in school in Fredericksburg, and Paul, he's in school in Fredericksburg, and Chrissy, the little one, she's in the second or third grade? Third grade. Third grade. Okay, and then our second oldest boy. Oldest. See if you can get the picture there. You got it? Okay. That was Mike. But he got killed in an accident. And the youngest boy is Harry Allen. He's been, he went in the service for four years after high school. And from then, he went to various different schools and finally wound up with a BA and a BS in science. And he's hoping to teach school. And this here, this our oldest granddaughter, got married this past September. And her husband is uh, Jeffrey Collinor. 
they live in San Antonio. They're both working at SAA, USAA, and she is pursuing her master's degree in psychology. <coughs> you didn't say anything. No correction. I'm Ted Hornberger, son of uh, Benno Hornberger. This is my wife, Tootie. We have been married for 46 years. We have two children, Judy Gale and Charles Benno. This is a picture of Judy and her husband, Louis Rossi. Then we, uh, Charles Benno, better known as Bucky, is married to Kathy Anderson. They have one child, Chad Jeffrey. We live on a part of Ferdinand's original homestead and about a quarter of a mile from Theodore's home. This is the community's first school building. It was built in, in the late 1880s. Ferdinand's grandchildren and some great-grandchildren attended school here. The first schoolmaster was hired by parents of the community and brought here from Germany. We are told he was very strict disciplinarian and rule violations were dealt with promptly and severely. The house you see nearby was built later for subsequent teachers. This school was last used in about 1945. So. Is that an old picture? The shooting range and hall were built in 1893. The shooting range you see here is a 200-yard range, and the targets are a 3-inch bullseye, which is a 10. These facilities continue to serve the community. A picture of the Grape Town Shooting Club members taken in the late 1800s is in the Institute of Texas Cultures on Hemisphere Plaza in San Antonio. Some of Ferdinand's descendants are in the picture. Today, some 90 to 100 years later, the men of this area continue to gather at the shooting range to practice and demonstrate their skills as marksmen, of which I am one, Theo Hornberger. I won the marksman in 1978 and 1980. This photo of the Grape Town Shooting Club was taken in about 1888. Two of Ferdinand's children are shown here. Robert is in the back row. And Theodore is in the center. This is the Grape Town Hall. For several generations, the people of this community have enjoyed many festive occasions on these grounds. Today is no exception. 
We will tour the area and meet some of the Hornburgers that have worked to make these reunions a success. We will also meet some of the other folks here today. And later we'll take pictures of individual family members. Did you get him? Uh, here we go, here we go. Turn around. I was talking to a daily. It's good. Where's the beer? Yeah. No. Okay. So, okay. These are the people that are responsible for doing the barbecue. To my left to the right, we have Teddy Hornberger. The lady is the official sampler. This is Alice Hornberger. The man with the swab stick is Kurt Cullenbear. And on the right with the fork is Bucky Hornberger. So what she talks in Then they got another one that's... <laughs> My great grandfather, Ferdinand Hornberger, and his wife, her maiden name was Schulze. Uh, as we told you previously, the year that they were they died, and this site is about two miles south of the Grape Town Cemetery. It's up under some live oak trees. I guess they didn't have a cemetery at that time, so they just uh, buried the people on the property that they owned. We'll probably show you their home that they lived in. That was the last home that they lived in before they died. And if you'll notice, around the live oak trees are a little bit different in nature than normally. They have all these gnarls or knots and things around them. And that may have been caused by fences being built around the trees in the early years. Uh, Reuben, Genther, Hornberger, the two brothers, laid these slabs down for posterity, so we would have a site where our, my great grandparents were buried. And I guess they would be Kirby's great great grandparents. I'm not sure about that. Kirby. Here's Beside great-grandfather Ferdinand Hornberger and his wife are two sisters of grandmother, Schultze, S-C-H-U-L-T-Z-E. We were told that they spent their last days with grandfather Ferdinand Hornberger and his wife, and he built each a little house that they lived in, so they had their separate quarters. And when they passed away, why, they were also buried at this same site. I believe one of the sisters' a married name was Rentine, as it's pronounced in German, and the other sister's name was Mrs. Hagelmann. H-A-G-E-L-M-A-N. I believe you pronounce that Hagelmann. Something about the house down there.